At the moment, my art has a kind of feel of illustration about it. When, when I set out to paint, say, a landscape, which is what I want to do, it ends up looking like a kind of a fairy tale. I've kind of always had this filter on where I see everything is like magical fairy tale land. So that's kind of what I paint. So, so my question is, why in the world would you want to stifle that? What we all want to get to is to the point, right, where you get to go into your studio every day, you get to create work where you absolutely love the process of coming in and the actual process of painting, where you love and are proud of the work and where enough of the public also feels that same way. But how do you find that voice? Often a lot of artists stop where they love the process and they love the finished work and the public's just kind of, eh, it's all right. It goes with the couch, you know, so maybe I'll buy it. You can't make a living if that's what your art does. And so one of the best ways to actually find that voice is to... I recently hosted a live Q&A session as part of one of my course bundles. And this artist had a great question about whether or not the fact that her work was more illustrative was hurting her sales and maybe keeping her prices from reaching the higher level that she hoped to achieve. You can keep watching to see the entire conversation and my thoughts and advice on this. And for those of you who'd be interested in attending one of these live Q&A sessions where I'll answer questions as well as critique a piece of your work, you can stick around to the end of this video and I'll explain how you can do that. Um, I'm, I'm wanting to move into fine art. At the moment, my art has a kind of feel of illustration about it. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing to make it look like that and how to change it to move into fine art. So I wonder if you could just talk a bit about the difference between the two so I kind of know what I need to do to change. Sure. That's actually, that's actually my, that was my journey as well, because I, my dream was to be an illustrator. Um, a commercial artist because an illustrator was the only way you actually got to get paid for actually drawing and painting. Um, and um, yeah, that didn't work out. And I joined the police force for, for 20 years, but that I found that very difficult as well to move from that illustrative type quality to uh, more just paintings where you're just creating paintings that people want to buy. So I, I need to ask you a few questions there. So by that, then do you mean that your work like has a high, high degree of realism to it and your skills are pretty accomplished? So, yeah, I can, I can paint in, in realism, but um, when, when I set out to paint, say a landscape, which is what I want to do, it ends up looking like a kind of a fairy tale i've got can i just i've sure. got one here sure cameron's gonna spotlight you so if you just put okay i can see that behind you there okay yeah so let's talk briefly about the whole thing about fine art versus like illustration um because there, there's a there's a we're probably going to spend a lot of time today talking about the whole idea of the art world and the different art villages um and by fine art, you mean you want to create paintings that you want to create that hopefully people are going to buy, right? Yeah, to put me up into that sort of higher price bracket. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's nothing that says the type of work that you're doing right now won't and can't do that. Um, okay. and, it, and so the whole difference of an illustration, right? An illustration is is basically a, it's a gra it's a graphic image to to accompany an article or a story, or it's like the cover of a novel or the like a, a, a cover of an album for those of you of my generation, we still had album covers, but there's nothing that says that illustrative type work cannot also reach that extreme pinnacle of, of the, the, the kind of, and when we say fine art, fine art is, is again, it's one of those terms is because when, often when you say fine art, you're talking about kind of, you know, like, well, like publicly funded galleries and museums and actually what goes on in a lot of universities where that's really, really dominated by postmodernism, which is a whole other thing that I can get into later if you guys want me to. But, but the, the thing about the work that you just showed me right now that actually is and could be a, a big selling point is it's very unique if all of your work kind because of, here here's what you need to focus on as what we all want to get to is to the point right where you get to go into your studio every day you get to create work where you absolutely love the process of coming in and the actual process of painting where you love and are proud of the work 
and where enough of the public also feels that same way. And then once you get to the point where you can consistently do that, two things happen. The public lines up to buy your work and you get very, very busy being in your studio painting, which is why it's so important that you love the process because when you become successful, you're going to be doing a lot of it. So I have to ask you, like, so when your work ends up looking like, again, away from reality, but but a little more kind of fantastical, like, do you really love that process of painting that way? Like, what is it that's drawing you to actually paint in that way? Um, because that's kind of I've, the way I've always kind of seen the world, I suppose. I, I've, I've kind of always had this filter on where I see everything is like magical fairy tale land. So that's kind of what I paint. So so my question is, why in the world would you want to stifle that? Um, because I think that, again, I'm not saying that, that where you are now is that place, right? And the other thing I would say about that is who determines when you've reached that place? It's the public. Um, and so what we have to do on that journey, if we want to actually reach a point where we're making a decent living from our art, is we have to be constantly pushing ourselves and trying new things because often a lot of artists stop where they love the process and they love the finished work and the public's just kind of, eh, it's all right. It goes with the couch, you know, so maybe I'll buy it. You can't make a living if that's what your art does. So have you actually been having your art out there displayed and have you been doing shows and things? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and so are you getting that's nice or are you getting oh my god i love it how much is it i'm gonna buy it so i'm getting i love it but i'm finding that there's kind of a cap at what people are willing to pay and i don't know if that's kind of because it's got that illustration feel to it i so i wouldn't say that necessarily because there are a number of artists out there who are very old peter max from the 70s and 80s like he was an illustrator he did a lot of the doodle art uh, the art, the actual pen and ink stuff for the doodle arts and that guy's stuff sells for like millions of dollars. Um, but what I would say is if you're it, the cap on the price may have to do with if you're actually showing in festivals where like depending on the festival, certain festivals have clients coming where they're only willing to spend, you know, and you know, 500 or a thousand dollars on a painting. And then there are other big art festivals where serious collectors come where they're willing to spend thousands of dollars um, on a piece. So that may be part of it. Well, here's what I will tell you. Here's what you need to do. And this is good for all of you is, again, you need you need to find that voice. But how do you find that voice? Right. And again, you don't get to decide when you have found the voice. The public decides. You just get to decide that I'm only going to do stuff where I love the process and I love the work. And so one of the best ways to actually find that voice is to seek out influences. And so that is to seek out artists whose work you really, really love. What, you know, we all know when we see a, we see a painting and we just go, oh my God, look at that. You know, and you get the, the hair stand up on the back of your neck, you actually salivate and the immediate thought goes through your head is, oh my God, I would love to be able to paint that way or try to paint that way. And then that's what you should do is seek out artists of very, very different stylistic approaches where their work looks very different, but where their work has that effect on you and then try to replicate their process. And for those of you who actually have a lot of painting experience with a lot of different te techniques and mediums, you might be able to kind of just suss it out on your own about probably here's how the artist went about it. If not, then I would search that artist out on the internet and on YouTube and see maybe you can see videos of the artist showing his process or her process and the techniques. And then play around with actually trying to create work in that same vein until you've got a strong handle on it. But you don't stop there. Then you move on to another artist who's very different, different techniques, different process, do the same thing. And then every once in a while, you because every time you're doing that, right, you're adding tools to that artistic tool belt. You're adding experiences about different processes, different ways of approaching a painting, different mediums, different techniques. Uh, and then every once in a while, you just go into your studio and you say, okay, here's an image that I want to paint. And I am just going to draw on all of these varied things that I've learned through through kind of mimicking these influences 
and try different ways that I can create the painting, putting these things all together in my own unique way. And you do that for a while and you're just gauging the results, right? And and again, I'm, 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 this, is good. this is a question that's gonna take a long answer, but it's good because it's covering a lot of things. You need to know that when you're doing this, you're in process mode. And in process mode, that's where we're trying things for the first time. We're doing things that we are not competent and confident in. Um, and so what happens is there's a high degree of failure in process mode, which is fine and which is the way it's supposed to be. And that's what a lot of artists have problems with. If you don't understand that, if you don't give yourself permission for the painting to fail when you're in process mode, what happens is you try something new for the first time and it doesn't work out. And then maybe you try something else new and it doesn't work out. And what happens? We get frustrated. Um, we scurry back to our comfort zone. And then we're afraid to step out of our comfort zone because that fear of failure is something that's really ingrained in us. Whereas when you say, okay, I'm going to give permission for this painting to fail. I'm in process mode. I'm here to learn. Um, and like I say, then, but what also happens in process mode is that's where you have breakthroughs. That's where you have something that is better than anything you've ever done before. Or sometimes what happens is you'll create a painting where the overall painting really didn't work out, but you'll go, oh, I love what's going on down in this corner. And now you think, okay, well, here's how I did that. Now you've got that you can bring forward to your next paintings. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you're interested in attending a live Q&A session with me where I'll answer any of your questions and even critique one of your paintings, you can do that through my Unstoppable Artist Bundle. And here's a little explanation of what's entailed with that. If you're serious about selling your art and eventually actually having a career where you can make a good living from your art, then you want to listen up. I put together a series of courses in my Unstoppable Artist program. This is all of the stuff that I wished I knew when I first started out. And it's going to provide you with all of the tools that you need to achieve your own artistic potential and eventually have a successful career as an artist. You're going to master composition so that every single painting you start has the chance to be an absolute winner. And you'll get one live free Zoom call with me where I'll answer your questions and critique your work. You're going to understand about the business of being an artist, which is absolutely crucial to having a successful career. You're going to learn how to take and edit absolutely brilliant photographs so that you start from the best reference material possible every time you go to start a new painting. I'm going to show you my entire process for creating my vibrant light-filled paintings as well as showing you how to use the water-soluble oils, which is what I use, and I think they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I'll work with you to create a plan tailored to where you are right now in terms of artistic development with clear goals and objectives, giving you the steps that you need to take in the right order to achieve your maximum artistic potential and develop your own unique voice as an artist. You're also going to learn about the biggest mistakes that most artists make that keep them from actually achieving their dreams. And if you're really serious about pursuing a full-time career as an artist, you'll have the opportunity to join my Hungry Artist community, where you not only get all of my courses, but you'll join a private Facebook group, and you'll have access to me on a weekly basis. I do weekly live Zoom calls with the members of the community, again, where I critique artists' work, answer questions, and provide that ongoing coaching so that you're not wasting time on the wrong things and that you're able to focus on the things that are going to get you to your goals faster. So again, if you're serious about eventually having a successful career as an artist, I really encourage you. Click on the link. That'll take you to a page where you can learn more about this program and give you an amazing discount. Now, all of these courses put together regularly sell for over $1,000. You can get it on my website at the amazing discount of $299. But if you click on the link here, that'll take you to a page where you can get the entire program for $199. I'm so confident that you are going to get way more value than what you paid for. That there's a 30 day, no questions asked money back guarantee. If you don't think you've got your money's worth, just send me an email and I'll happily refund your money. So if you're serious about achieving your maximum potential as an artist and would actually like to make a good living from your art, I really encourage it. Click on the link below and hopefully I'll see you in the Tim Packer Art Academy.